Today, I'm doing a walkthrough of the 2020 GM IntelliLink system. This thing is insane. Let's take a look. So much has changed with the GM system, even when I look back at it in 2017. As a matter of fact, if your vehicle is older than 2019 and newer than 2014, I'm gonna go ahead and link a video down below. That might look a lot more like your system that you have in your vehicle right now. Speaking of my 2017, I need to thank the folks over here at Ebersol GMC in Lebanon, PA, for letting me use a 2020 today to go over that new IntelliLink system. As a matter of fact, let's get started on that now. So much has changed and I'm so excited to show you guys this. First things first, you have your audio. And again, they did make a big change back in 2019, but all your presets are now up top, which I liked mine down at the bottom. Uh, because it was easier as you were driving just to go ahead and hit that down at the bottom. This kind of gets in the way a little bit, but it is what it is. The interface has completely changed on the radio here. One of the things that I think is absolutely huge is the ability to, well, let's just do this just real quick. Play a little bit on there, and boom. You can pause Sirius Satellite Radio on your car. That is a big deal. That is something that I would love to have on mine, but I guess I'm going to have to get a newer vehicle to do it because pausing live radio is absolutely awesome. Another cool feature with Sirius Satellite Radio on here is uh, account info, listener options. You can go into your settings and block explicit content, reset your listening history so it doesn't recommend things that you don't necessarily want, or tune start song, start song when you begin uh, tuning to that channel. So that's actually really cool if you go to another channel you're able to go ahead and start listening to the song. You can leave your location services on, and that's your radio ID there. So much different from the 2017s alone on this, so it's absolutely awesome. Your sound, you can go ahead and bump up your bass, your mid-range, and your treble. Fade, you know, you're, you're going to be playing basically your speakers. You also have the ability to browse, which has changed. They have a whole new li lineup on here. You can go through and do sports, news, talk, so it's much faster to find what it is that you're looking for, and it'll take you into those channels and give you a little bit more info about the channels that you're looking for. Much nicer and much easier to search on this in the 2020 setup. Absolutely awesome. If you got your stuff that you're listening to, and I'm sure this is people who are jumping into the truck and listening things will pick the most listened to items that you have on there, but for me, it would be big old Howard Stern there, and I'd be listening to Howard every day on here, and it's great because then I could pause it, or I can rewind it if I miss something. Absolutely love that feature. So something that was actually set up in 2019, it's still continuing on in 2020, is users. You can actually set up your own profile if you've got multiple drivers in a vehicle, so they can customize it for anything that you need from your radio settings, to your heat settings, to your seat settings. All those different profiles will let you set up the radio and system of the vehicle any way that you want. This is nice uh, if you've got multiple drivers in the, in, in the vehicle. I don't have that, so it isn't something that I necessarily would use. But if you do use it or you think you want to use it, comment down below and I'll go into specifics on it in another video. I'm going to go ahead and skip phone for a moment because I want to get back to that. That's going to be when I set up the Bluetooth. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me how to set up a Bluetooth in the uh, IntelliLink. We'll get to that in a moment. Next, we're going to jump into my favorite thing, and that's settings. So many good things here in settings. They've broken it up into three different sections. Again, major overhaul in 2019 continues on here in 2020. Uh, you can go in and set your date and time, time zones if you want to do it automatically, 24-hour format, languages, uh, English, French, uh, Spanish, and French. Uh, phones on here. If you got different phones, this is where you can set up your Bluetooth. We'll go ahead and do that in a moment. Next, your Wi-Fi networks. If there's any Wi-Fi nearby, you can connect to through the vehicle. And then, of course, you can use to update your system and all that. Wi-Fi hotspots, if you have a vehicle that is enabled with Wi-Fi, you can go ahead and set it up here. You can actually change your password and manage all that through here. There are a couple different places where you can do that. You can share your hotspot if you want. It'll tell you how many people are connected to it. Next up, we have your privacy, which is something that is very big. If you want to stop your location servicing, uh, voice recognition sharing, you have different uh, things that will allow contacts in the vehicle as far as apps, navigation, OnStar, 
And this goes through basically a whole bunch of privacy concerns that people may or may not have, sharing info, giving out info on your vehicle. Now, I will say the one most important thing with all of these things is a lot of this has to do with OnStar. If you're going to be using OnStar, this is something that you're going to probably want to leave on because that way, if your vehicle's stolen, they'll be able to track it. If you get in an accident, they'll be able to track where your accident is and get someone out to you. And that, in my opinion, is pretty important. So you're going to have to understand that a level of privacy will have to be given if you're going to want to have your vehicle tracked for those specific reasons. Next, we have display, which again is pretty much the same across all the vehicles. Set up your mode for day or night, or you can do it as auto, and that will dim or brighten it based upon the time of day so it doesn't shatter your eyes when you're trying to look at it. You can calibrate the screen or you can turn off the display. Next, we have sounds, maximum startup volume, same in uh, all the other vehicles that we've talked about, showing in Telelink, uh, audible touch feedback that will make taps and noises as you're moving through the system. As far as voice goes, if you are using the onboard system, not Siri or Google Play or Bixby, whatever it is that you're using, the system will have its own settings to be confirmed more or less when you're doing something, prompt length, audio feedback speed if you want it to be faster or talk slower, friendly prompts, tutorial mode, all that sort of stuff. You'll probably turn tutorial mode when you buy the vehicle, but that's fine. You'll get used to it and it'll show you and walk through to the point where you'll get annoyed and then you'll turn it off on your own anyway. But that's where you would find it when you do need to turn it off. Next up is you're setting your favorites, which you can do through here. But at the same time, it's probably better to do it on the radio where you tap and hold the button at the top and that'll lock in your favorites. But you do have the ability to manage them through here. And you can see here, this little bar keeps going down and down. Well, like on my vehicle in 17, they have up to 40 favorites. If you have 40 favorites, good on you. I probably use about 10 or 15, but that's, again, personal preference. Any updates that you need to do, you would go in here through the vehicle software. It'll check for you automatically if you are set up on the internet. If not, you do need to connect to one of those Wi-Fi hotspots, and it will check it for you. We're not going to let that go through that. Preferences, if you want to do a new update uh, in the background, again, if you're set up on Wi-Fi, you're able to do that, your hotspot. It will automatically update for you, or maybe you like to update it yourself so you know what you're getting. The About page talks about the system update. Uh, what build number you're on, open source software, device registration. These are all things probably more or less used by the factory uh, or dealership. But if you know there's an update out and you haven't gotten it, you can verify it here by that information. Running applications down here at the bottom. I'll tell you that what's running in the settings, what's audio, what's running in the phone, the apps. And you can stop those at any given time if it needs to be reset. And uh, you've got 1.2 gig used of 4.2 gigs that are free in the car. And that's just the system itself. There's probably a lot more, but it's taken up by the system actually that needs to run. And of course, if you're trading the vehicle in, you can return to factory settings and get rid of everything on there. Next up, we have your apps. And again, this has to do with turning on Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. Uh, you can go in and look at your apps that are actually updated on the system itself. You can go in your terms and conditions. And again, these are apps that are on the vehicle itself, not these apps on the phone. And we'll get into that in a moment. Audio, you can go in and set your audio volume. And this I do not have on my truck. I wish I would have this. Faster you go, the louder it gets. Basically, you got your windows down and the noise gets louder and louder. Next thing you can't turn your radio, you got to turn it up and turn it up. And then when you slow down, you're like, geez, I got to turn my radio down. This is perfect for that. You have the ability to set up your audio favorites. Again, a little bit redundant there. Explicit content filter. If you got kids in the car, it won't play songs that have curse words in it. You can reset your music index. Climate control. We are going to have to turn the vehicle on with that. Hold your ears there for a second, folks. This is a diesel, by the way. Might cause a little bit of noise. I apologize in advance. Climate control. This is the ability to do your auto fan when you turn the vehicle uh, to auto, when you hit the auto button, low, medium, and high. So that's up to you. Auto rear defrog, defrog. Auto rear defog, as well as rapid heat uh, elevated idle. Diesels only, you'll get that. Navigation, which is something this vehicle does have. You can set up all your preferences in here. Navigation voice control, 
uh, manage history, all your preferences, if you don't use Apple Maps or Android Auto, depending on uh, your system. Your phone, you have the ability to show my phone number if it's connected, privacy, all that information can show up once your phone is linked up, and we'll get into that in a moment. Sirius XM, uh, same thing, you have all that that's on Sirius XM. Again, kind of redundant to have it on there. My GMC is uh, an app that you can access on here, but I'll be completely honest with you. Yes, you can access it on here, but there is a lot of information that you can get. I suggest downloading the app on iOS or Android or even going into the desktop. You get so much information about your vehicle and you can get a report emailed to you so you know exactly what's going on with your vehicle on a monthly basis. Again, I suggest downloading the app for that. Moving on to vehicle, we're going to leave the uh, truck running for the moment because uh, there's a couple things in here that the truck does need to be running for this because this is one of my favorite parts. This vehicle is loaded, so you're going to see everything that you could possibly get uh, for a GM and Telelink. If your vehicle has less things, you might not see some of these, but rear seat reminder. Uh, we went over this back in 2017. If you've got a kid, I hope you don't need a rear seat reminder to remind you that they're back there. If you do, well... I guess you got a whole other list of problems. I don't know. Climate and air quality, a little bit redundant. We saw that already uh, back on the list under system. Collision detection systems, extremely important. Alert type for your safety. If you're falling asleep, uh, your seat will alert you. Forward collision system, if you're uh, moving forward, it'll give you a little detection that you're getting too close to something. Lane change alert, park assist, rear cross traffic alert. All things I think you need to have on all things that you should definitely have on and I am living proof of that because if I did have it on probably wouldn't have scraped up my rims mm, that's a different story for another video comfort and convenience is also uh, something that is pretty cool you can set your chime volume when you get in and out of your vehicle if it's annoying to you uh, if you have power mirrors you have them both tilt down a little bit when you're backing up so you can see what's going on behind you so you don't bump into anything you got driver or just passenger so that's actually pretty cool you can set that up uh, remote mirror folding if you go ahead and double click the lock and double click the unlock and hold it down they will go ahead and fold and unfold for you so they'll be out of the way once you exit the vehicle next we have lighting uh, this is something that I think is pretty cool your vehicle locator lights will stay on when the vehicle uh, is when you're exiting as well as the lights in the in cab will stay lit for 30 60 and 120 seconds I think that's important if you're uh, getting out somewhere dark. On the power door locks, you have the ability for open door anti-lockout. If any of the doors are not shut all the way, this will not let you lock the vehicle. So I think that's important to have that on if you own the vehicle. That way you shut the door, you go to lock it, you go, why isn't it locking? That'll tell you right then and there that something's not closed all the way. Uh, auto door unlock. I like to do just the driver door because I'm by myself. Just in case you walk up, you don't have someone coming in from the other side jumping in the car and you know making you drive away delayed door lock is something you can turn on or off if you hit the lock on your car and you get out and shut the door it will lock in about five to ten seconds so if you close it and you realize you forgot something the door is not automatically locked or god forbid you left your keys in there but that should not happen anymore you should never be able to lock your keys in your car with the way this is set up and i don't think it will let you remote lock unlock and start this is the feedback that you get. You flash your lights when you hit your remote lock. If you want to lock feedback, it will, you know, lock it. It'll do lights and horn. Lights only, horn only. I always do both just so I can see it and hear it. Uh, if I'm standing inside my house and I can't hear it, um, you know, beep, then you have the ability to look at it. Remote door unlock. I always do just driver's door. Again, if I'm walking towards the car and I hit it once, it will unlock the driver's door. A little bit redundant there. This vehicle does have cooled and heated seats, so when you remote start, depending on the temperature, if you have both of those on, each one will work depending on the weather. So if it's hot out, the cool seats will start. If it's cold out, the heated seats will start. Some folks told me in uh, 2017 that turn them both on, the vehicle will pick it for you. I don't necessarily know if I like that because if I come out in the winter, I don't necessarily want my heat seated, heated seats turning on if it's... 50 degrees out. I, I, I just don't need it. So again, pure preference. Remote window operation. If you double click your uh, unlock and hold it down, your windows all will go down. The only problem is they don't go up with that. So it's kind of annoying that you can't put them up if it starts raining and you're not near your vehicle. 
But if you want to air your vehicle out before you get in it in a hot day, that is always helpful too. You have passive door unlock, and right now it's set up for driver door only. Uh, this uh, basically will tell you which doors unlock when you hit the button on the driver's handle to unlock the vehicle. Selecting off will turn off the passive doors, unlocking all the doors. So again, if you're by yourself, you probably want to have your driver's door only. The other ones will stay locked. Same thing, passive door lock. That is off. It also obviously specifies the vehicle will automatically lock after all the doors are closed. And again, you can do that if you want to, all via your remotes here. So very, very cool. Uh, remote left and vehicle alert. That is something that we've experienced a few times already today. Uh, getting in and out of the vehicle, if you leave the keys in it, it will tell you that they're in the car. Hence, not being able to lock the car. Something you should leave on, especially if you don't have a uh, key anymore it's a keyless you know push button to start so something that you should leave on i implore you leave it on seating position is something that you may or may not have in your vehicle uh, this vehicle does have uh, seat memory so you have an entry memory and you have an exit memory when you get in the car and you push the button and you have that turned on it will go to your seat settings that you have if you're short like me the seat goes up a little bit and goes a little bit in. That's always nice. And exit, the seats go all the way down and all the way back. So you're not working on that bolster that's here on some of these seats. It's easier to get out, especially if you're in a big, tall truck. It's a little closer to the ground. So that's definitely a help to have that. You do have trailering here, which uh, will give you the uh, side trailer camera and bed view camera if you have that uh, set up or have that option on your vehicle. Valet mode. Again, something that I'm not really too sure. I guess if you do valet a lot, you can lock your uh, radio so they can't get into it. Something that I did notice is not on here is uh, teen driver mode. Now, we are in a diesel, so teens aren't allowed to drive diesels? I don't know. Either way, if you're a teen and you don't want limitations, this is the vehicle to drive. Next is your uh, Wi-Fi hotspot. If that's something that you have in your vehicle, you have the ability to set it all up on here. And you can give your password out to people if you choose to. You have the trailering button here, which I do not have on my truck, but it'll allow you to check the status and your connections and everything. And uh, do the, uh, depending on what you're at, a conventional fifth wheel gooseneck, uh, you can check your trailers, get your information, add profiles. I mean, there's so much on here to make sure that your light works, the brakes are all set up, all the lines are hooked up. Something very, very cool to have if you're towing a lot. On here, there are additional apps, which is similar to what mine had, uh, but a little bit nicer on here. There are none downloaded on here uh, as of right now, but you can download specific apps on here, like Pandora or Spotify or any of those sort of things that you have. OnStar Services, if you do have that, this is where you can go to uh, call an advisor if you don't hit the button that's literally right up there. You can do that, but you've got your turn-by-turn -turn directions and your Wi-Fi hotspot account, uh, as well as all of the information. Pick a package if you uh, don't have it, where you can join it if you do need it. Cameras uh, are actually pretty cool in this vehicle. Something that's a little bit different, uh, which you may or may not have on your vehicle, but this is absolutely insane. You have so many different options on here to be able to look at this vehicle in so many ways. Again, highly uh, set up for tra trailering and towing. There are a lot of vehicles that have the overhead shot and then your rear view mirrors that pull down the side of your vehicle. A lot of this is for towing, but there are a lot of uh, just regular vehicles out there that have that information available to make it much easier for you to park your vehicle uh, when you're out there driving. So something that I think is very cool. They also have a bed down shot. So they also have a top down shot uh, if you've got your uh, trailer hitch on the back of the vehicle as opposed to like a fifth wheel or a gooseneck, uh, which this is also set up for on the back of the truck as well. Something that is very, very cool. And uh, the camera setup on these things are absolutely awesome. And it's something that, you know, if you're going to be getting a vehicle like this, very, very helpful. Next, they have climate control, which I find a little bit weird because they have all the controls down here on the bottom. And that's something that I'm okay with using down here. However, I completely understand if you want to have it up on the screen a little bit. So it's a little higher. Thus, your eye has to travel less to see exactly what's going on. And of course, if you go ahead and you use your functions down here at the bottom, it will pop up on the screen where you can hit that and it'll take you right into your controls. So it's something that I believe is a little bit redundant, but it's nice to have it pop up on there for you. 
But if you're someone that likes to leave it up there, you have the ability to touch all of those things, to work all of that. And again, your eyes go a little bit less further off the road. Again, that's pure preference. They have all the options down here at the bottom, the manual knobs and all of that. And they have it on the screen as well, which I think is very helpful. Of course, down at the bottom here, you have the ability. You've seen me constantly hitting back to home. Once I'm in an app, these all stay down here. You can go into music, you can go into a phone, you can go into navigation, and you can go into that climate, uh, as well as uh, your uh, hotspot, your uh, temperature, your location services are on, as well as the time. Oy. All right. So before I show you guys how to set up the Bluetooth, I need to also mention that Ebersol is celebrating their 100th year and uh, they're going to be throwing a big event in May. In the meantime, they will be running some great specials, so hit up my buddy Jerry if you're in the area and looking for a new car or truck. I'll put his information in the description below and mention my name. Maybe he'll give you a better deal. Or maybe not. But let's get back to the Bluetooth setup. I had a lot of people ask me in my last video that I did this, how do you set up Bluetooth? We're going to go ahead and check that out right now, and it's going to allow you to not only control phone calls, but if you don't want to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you can use this as well. And there are a couple different ways you can do this, but I think the easiest way is to jump right into the phone itself when you click on that. Basically, hit one button to connect your phone, and you would go ahead and add your phone. Now, what this is going to do, it's going to tell you that you can link up through your Bluetooth on your phone right here and what you're going to do is you're going to have my gmc pop up at the bottom and once you go ahead and connect to that it's going to ask you for the numbers you match the numbers up on the screen there you're going to hit pair you're going to hit pair and boom the iphone is now connected for ingoing and outgoing calls if you want to sync your inf information on there which i don't want to do because this is not my vehicle you can do that and once you get back to the screen here your phone is all set up and you can do a myriad of things. You can make phone calls. You can look at your recents, your contacts, which I do not have on. And now that your phone is hooked up via Bluetooth, you can easily go in and select iPhone for your Bluetooth or your Android device. And it will tell you what's playing on there. You can go in and browse on your phone and listen to all your music. As well as stop, pause, forward to the next song, depending on what you're listening to. Shuffle all the music that's on there. And now that you're hooked up, it'll actually tell you your Bluetooth strength as well as your battery life on your phone. All done via Bluetooth. Personally, I like to have it hooked up through CarPlay because it is directly connected to the system and it is a little bit louder and does sound a little bit better. You may not notice or even care just for the simple fact that you don't have to plug it in, but it's there in case you want to do it. So depending on what iOS version you are using, this is iOS 13 and this is the new and improved uh, CarPlay. Now, I really do enjoy this because they do have a functionality here that currently on iOS you can have your Apple Maps, uh, your route to home, how long it'll take to get home, as well as um, what's playing on your iTunes. And right now it's Apple-centric only. This has been opened up to third party, so they will be allowing you to hopefully put what you want in here if you're using Spotify or you're using Google Maps. But that is a nice little functionality. But if you don't like that look and you just want to go look at your apps, you hit the bottom left corner there and you're all set up. If you want, I can do a more in-depth look at CarPlay as well as Android Auto uh, over a couple of the versions that they have between iOS 12 and 13. be more than happy to do that. Comment down below and let me know. In the meantime, if you don't have a 2020, maybe you have a little older vehicle, go ahead and check out this video right here. That will go over the 2017 and 18. And uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button. we got a lot more content coming up. You guys take it easy and have a good day.